In this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over calculating the size of an indoor cannabis operation and give you some numbers to kind of look at and compare maybe to your own operation. If you're looking at designing one from scratch, some ideas to take into consideration. All right, let's sharpen those pencils. Let's go to calculating the size of an indoor grow operation. So first off, when we're calculating size here, uh, it's important to know how many full-size plants you can take care of. Just because you can fit them in an area, particularly for a grow room, uh, if you can't take care of them, there will be an overall loss. You want to factor in also have an idea what your labor may be. However, size available and limiting amount of light coverage are all factors into potential size of an indoor operation. And I'll go over some of the specifics to lighting uh, in particular at the very end here. So there are square foot recommendations, and I stress these are just general recommendations, good starting points. Depending on the plant morphology of your chosen cannabis strain, this will impact the overall size of each plant. Also, your pruning method will also have a great impact. Note that a seed of green will have the most plants per square foot due to the short veg cycle. However, in general, for full-sized uh, flowering plants, one plant per five square feet or two plants per square meter is the typical kind of general starting point for a recommendation. Now we're looking at plants per 10 square feet or that one square meter uh, per growth stage. So while I quoted two plants, that'd be for the flowering room. If you're looking at propagation in that same 10 square feet or square meter, you could get over potentially over 150 plants. For a vegetative room, you want to decrease from 150 all the way down to about three. And when they make that final change to that flower room, that's where you'd be utilizing those two plants per square meter or per 10 square feet, depending what system you're using for measurement. Now these also other limitations to consider, as I said, the labor. Just because you can fit them all there, can you take care of them all? Do you have the time to dedicate to all, all those plants are gonna need throughout their entire grow cycle? And then there's the lighting that I'll mention in, in the next slide, and also the circuits. Just because you can put 10 lights, does your electrical system support or can it support 10 lights that you're choosing to utilize in that area? Now I said the lights tend to be the most limiting, so I want to give you just some general um, ideas as far as what lighting should be used for what. So as general rules, if you have a 1000 watt HPS or high pressure sodium that we see and see right here, about a five by five foot for a flowering plant or a six by six square foot area for a veg plant. So this is where we're measuring out those areas. 600 watt uh, HPS, we see the measurements there. CMH, ceramic metal halide, we could see that um, very similar to the high pressure sodium as far as square footage. The 615 CMH uh, goes down to 4x4 four four feet for veg and only 3x3 three three for flower, so keep that in mind. A 650 watt LED, uh, kind of similar to that 1000 watt uh, HPS, but be mindful it's because these are just meant to be general recommendations. You may not be getting the same uh, potential output as you would with a 1000 watt there. And let's see a 420 LED, you could see the uh, listed out here. This is also gonna impact when we talk about electricity, the amount of cooling that you may need, because if you are using kind of the HPS, it will generate a little bit more heat than say an LED light. LED lights still generate heat, but just not quite as much. So also take that into factor and consideration on how you might be moving plants from potentially one type of light to another throughout their growth cycle and how that will impact things. So yes, there are a lot of variables, but it's important to understand some of those before you go out and start purchasing anything so you can make educated decisions and not have to rebuy things and help increase the odds of success of your growing operation.